provide oversight over my government, and I intend to work with them in that capacity. I never believed in the handshake uh, stories. I made my position very clear because I believe in democracy. I believe in a government that has checks and balances. When you have a government that does not have the opposition, you run the very high risk of having a government that is not accountable. Precisely what we have seen over the last uh, four years, that uh, we have had a situation where people who are supposed to be in the opposition are actually running matters in the executive. And that is why the people of Kenya voted for me and my team. They want a government that has checks and balances. And they want a government that is accountable. They do not want a mongrel of a government that nobody knows who is uh, in the executive, who is in the opposition, who is doing what. I think the people of Kenya want clarity because we are Democrats. And for the record, in this election, just to uh, answer what you have said, if you look at the, uh, uh, our TV screens, the celebration is across Kenya because I got 25 percent in 39 uh, counties out of 47 counties. That tells you that uh, our support base and the people who voted for us are across Kenya. So there will not be any part of Kenya that will be left behind in our administration because we believe in an inclusive, democratic, democratic progressive uh, government. And that is what we intend uh, to assemble. Relax, don't uh, relax. <laughs> I'm here. I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a quick one. Um, we talked about uh, you know the support that the president has given you in the last ten years. Uh, has he commented to you about um, your uh, victory? And number two, what is going to be your immediate assignment now that uh, you've been given that mandate? Um, I haven't uh, talked to Huru Kenyatta, uh, our outgoing president. But um, I am sure there will be a conversation because uh, now I am the president-elect and there has to be a transition. And in that transition, um, I am sure there will be a discussion between uh, the, 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 the current president and myself. Um, either at the... Uh, transition committee uh, situation, or I am sure that at some point this evening, maybe tomorrow, um, uh, we will have a conversation. Um, again, uh, as a Democrat, maybe I should disclose that uh, this morning I called my competitor, uh, the Honorable Rai Laudinga, and I had a discussion with him. And we agreed that uh, whatever the outcome of this election, uh, we should have a conversation. He had offered in his uh, statement, his uh, closing statement in uh, Kasarani, that he would be available for a handshake, you remember? And uh, I said that uh, I'd be available for us to have a cup of tea uh, because there are areas we can we can agree on moving the country forward um, in the context of those of us who will, running, who will be running the executive. And I'm sure uh, my competitor will take up his role and his team as the opposition so that we can see how we can move the country forward. Kashuri. Kashuri, 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 Let me listen to the lady. Kashuri, yeah. The lady, the lady first. Thank you, sir. My name is Leila Mohamed from NPD. Yes, Leila. Um, at the moment, we see celebrations, but we are also aware that in certain areas, there are protests against your 
declaration of being the president-elect at this particular moment, how do you speak to the entire country in your vision <coughs> of uniting people who have a past of being um, disenfranchised? As I have said, um, my support base and my team's support base is broad. Um, we obtained 25% of the vote in 39 counties. That leaves only eight counties. And in, even in those eight counties, it's just that we didn't measure, we didn't make it to 25%. It doesn't mean we didn't get any votes. So we have supporters across Kenya. I also want to state here and now that uh, uh, the administration, President Kenyatta and I uh, established in 2013, we tried the best we could to serve all parts of the country equally. If you look at all the programs we ran, whether there were programs on rural electrification, whether there were programs on Tibet, whether there were programs on uh, equipment for hospitals, whether there were programs on uh, making sure that we uh, spread um, uh, infrastructure, we endeavored to reach every part of Kenya. That is our philosophy, as I have said. We believe in an inclusive government. And in any case, the people of Kenya have spoken very loudly in this election. And they have spoken against negative ethnicity. In fact, in this election, the people of Kenya have raised the bar on leadership of Kenya. The people of Kenya have voted for a plan as we uh, christened it or a manifesto or an agenda for that matter and if you had the discussion in the campaign it was our issues versus our competitors issues and we intend to keep it that way and for your information uh, if you looked at my um, position uh, about three years ago, I actually made the uh, declaration to the people of Kenya that this election, we are going to make it not about leaders, but about the people. Not about power sharing, but about empowerment. And not about positions for us as leaders, but about jobs for ordinary people. If you go back my tweet, I think in 20, uh, maybe 2019 or 2020, that was my position and I am very proud that we have managed to elevate the contest in Kenya to the level of issues and because we have elevated that conversation it is my belief my commitment and my undertaking to the people of Kenya that we will have an all-inclusive government by way of representation and by way of making sure that we roll out our programs across Kenya. President, you take over a government at a time when people are hungry, <coughs> some people are angry the cost of living is high, uh, we are coming from the COVID-19 pandemic, so what is your priority right now? What do you tell the many people who cannot put food on the table? What do you tell the young jobless people who queue to vote for you? That's why I said in my uh, acceptance speech that I am acutely aware of the situation where we are as a country. I am aware of the cost of living. I am aware of the situation with uh, uh, the young people of our country. And that is why I made those very pertinent issues part of my campaign and part of my platform and part of what we intend to do as an, as an administration. These are issues that are dear to the people of Kenya. And, um, and, and that's also why I said we do not have the luxury of arguments, left, right, and center. We intend to hit the ground running. I am preparing myself that on day one of uh, um, swearing in as a president, when I have the legal power to do uh, things, I have lined up a couple of executive orders on what I intend to do to get the country moving and to get the situation in the country under control. President, President you...
your competitor move to court, are you in any ruling that maybe a run of repeat of elections? Democratically, will you respect such a, move, uh, such a decision? Should it come your way? I'm a Democrat. I believe in the rule of law. I respect uh, all our institutions. That's why our team, as you observed in uh, Bomas here, wanted to give the IEBC as an institution the opportunity to discharge their mandate. Uh, our competitors, I, I don't know whether they share with us uh, that kind of belief, but as a Democrat, we will respect just the same way we have respected the wishes of the people of Kenya in this election, we will respect every other decision of any institution uh, because we are believers in building our institutions and we are strong believers that it's only the rule of law that can take this country uh, forward. Mr. Yes, Gashuri? Yeah. Congratulations. Um, what, would you, what would, in your opinion, be the highlight of the campaigns that you've conducted, and to Kenyans, millions of them, who have witnessed the, you know, the things that you took so at Bomas just before your uh, declaration as president-elect, and maybe they are anxious tonight, what would be your message to them? I think the highlight of this campaign was the fact that for the first time, this campaign was not laced with ethnic, regional, biases, that both teams on our side were largely had a national face, largely, which, which, is, which is really a step in the right direction. And the fact that we prosecuted issues that uh, I am convinced <coughs> that the reason why the people of Kenya voted for me and my team is because they identify with the issues that uh, we prosecuted. What happened uh, this evening um, is an unfortunate uh, situation. I think it is an attempt by our competitors to roll back what we have achieved as a country. I think Kenya has moved way ahead of the situation that we saw this evening, the unfortunate situation we saw this evening. In fact, I think every Kenyan, irrespective of what side they support, agree that the conduct of the IEBC in this election was phenomenal. I think, as I said, the posting of the results of Form 34A, the presidential results, from every um, uh, uh, every place, every uh, polling station, you know, every polling station, the posting of those results from every polling station was, was a stroke of a genius. Because I think within six, six hours of the counting of the votes, I think almost 80% of the results were available on that portal. And I am yet to come across anybody who says that what they saw in the portal is not what was declared at the polling station. There is not yet a single uh, person who has said, I was in this polling station, what was declared is not what is on the, on the portal. So I think the fact that the portal was available for every Kenyan to tally the results, first to check the veracity of the results. You know, if you voted in polling station X, you could go to the portal and that polling station X would show you whether those were the results that are declared uh, or not. And secondly, um, uh, uh, the, the fact that the IEBC has taken time. We voted on Tuesday. Today is Monday. They took time to accommodate as many people.
people as possible, whatever issues they, they may have had. I think the IBC has really bent over backwards to accommodate uh, everybody. And um, unfortunately, I think there were people who did not want these results to be declared. Because, I mean, surely, even as we came to Bomas, it is only somebody from the moon who did not know the results. I mean, uh, let's be honest with one another. I mean, all of us here, with a simple calculator, you know, just with plus and minus, you would you tally the results. You didn't need a complicated, it was not, you didn't need algorithm, you didn't need square root, or all those other complicated things. You know, it just needed a simple calculator and you could add, you know, uh, and the elections were, I think every institution or every organization that bothered to tally the results came to the same conclusion. Whether it is Reuters, whether it is Al Jazeera, whether it is NTV, whether it is uh, Citizen uh, TV, and all the other people, everybody arrived at the same result. You know what the argument is all about. When I think everybody knew the results. So we just came to, uh, uh, to um, fulfill a constitutional mandate that it has to be declared by the chairman of uh, IEBC. Otherwise, in terms of results, surely good people. All of us knew what the results were. President elect? Yes. May I ask the question? And then we'll come back to this lady. Yes, I, I have two quick questions. The yes. first question is this Do you intend to keep your promises on the campaign trail? All of them. Do you intend to do that? And the second question is from where you sit right now, that everything is possible. Well, if I didn't believe in what I, I, I went to um, canvas with the people of Kenya, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have, uh, I wouldn't have gone out there. I intend to keep every commitment, and my team and I have worked out on every detail of the commitments we have made. We have costed the commitments we have made. We have arrange them in terms of what is urgent, what is medium term, what is long term. We know what to do in the first 100 days. We know what to do in the first three months. We know what to do continuously until uh, I think we have a program up to uh, the second year. So we intend to keep all our promises. Um, as I speak to you this evening, uh, we have vindicated that it is not the deep state and the system and all these other stories. It is the people of Kenya who ultimately hire or fire governments. I think that is the vindication that we all uh, have arrived at. I remember the biggest question that I used to be asked by my supporters is, we are going to vote for you. But we understand there is a system under, under deep state that will not allow you to be president, that will steal your vote. And I kept on assuring them that uh, I was the deputy president. If there was a deep state, I would know. If there was a system, I would know. And I think today, um, all the narratives around the deep state and the system uh, have come to naught. I think people now know that it is the power of their vote, as is provided for in the Constitution, that the, uh, the people of Kenya, they have, the, it is their, so, their vote is what is sovereign, is what determines whether we have a government or which type of government and which type of leaders and who gets elected. It's the people. I think, bottom line, not that there were no attempts. I think uh, with the time, you will know all these games that have been going on around bombers. Uh, I, I think that will, that will come out uh, with the time. But ultimately, the people of Kenya have been vindicated that they are the ones who decide. Yes, Madam. Sorry, sorry. Just one moment.
I'll come to you. My name is Njeri Kigamba from Kyoto FM. Mm. Uh, when you had the debate, uh, <coughs> we heard you talk about uh, the insecurity in some parts of uh, Rift Valley, mm. and you try to help. And uh, mm. now, being the president and elect in the mm. Republic of Kenya, mm. what plan do you have to solve this issue completely? We have a time bound plan on how to secure Kenya especially the areas uh, in, uh, along the Kerio Valley, West Pokot, uh, Geo Maraquet, Samburu, Turkana, which are the real problem or hotspots, if, I, if you allow me to call it. We have a clear plan on what we need to do in that area. And as I have told you, we have um, arranged them in terms of what is immediate, what can be done now and what can be done further down the road. And uh, we will shortly be uh, letting the country know the steps we are going to do to um, keep our commitment to the people of Kenya and, of course, secure the lives and property of, of, of Kenyans. Let me, that lady has been just one. Sorry. Um, this election, to the best of my knowledge, and I believe a majority, the largest majority of Kenyans, know that there was no other outcome of this election. It, it, didn't, it, didn't, it didn't matter who was looking at it. And maybe we encourage those commissioners and even other Kenyans who have issues with the election they know what to do. They, they need to follow the, 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 the constitutionally provided legal channels of uh, addressing their concerns. So um, what I am very happy about is that this election was the most transparent ever conducted in the Republic of Kenya. And I believe the majority of Kenyans share those views with me. I think um, even, as I said, even as we came to Bomas, I mean, everybody knew what the result was, you know. Uh, maybe uh, the people who are disappointed this evening is the people who erroneously believed in the deep state or the so-called system, and they, they erroneously believe that the, the, the results could be changed. It's not possible to change the results, and it's not possible to change the will of the people of Kenya. Close. Okay. Um, um, sir, just to uh, follow on that, and with the New York Times, a statement by these four election commissioners who form a majority of the IEBC, do you think that places any legal question mark on your declaration as president-elect? And you mentioned that you think that the scenes of chaos we saw this evening were designed to roll back your victory. Can you explain to us how do you think, uh, what do you think the intention of those scenes were that they might force you to roll back? No, I, 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 I said that the scenes you saw this evening, not, not a rollback of my victory, because my victory is in the public domain. I think to roll back our, our progress as a country, you know. Since, the, uh, since we slipped in 2007, we have made a lot of progress. In 2017, in 2022, I think we made huge strides in the right direction. Um, and so I, I think it was an attempt to try and take us back to where we came from. The people of Kenya made a commitment that we won't go back. And I am persuaded that we will not go back. We will go forwards from where we are today. Um, the four commissioners, um, uh, when you say they are a majority, uh, 
the, the, the people of Kenya voted. The commissioners are not supposed to vote. They are just supposed to declare the results. And it's not the commissioners to declare the results. It is the returning officer. So legally, constitutionally, the four commissioners pose no threat at all to the legality of the declaration because the constitution is very clear. The returning officer declares the results. The returning officer this evening, Wafula Chepukati, declared the results in accordance with the constitution, in accordance with the law. Any other thing is a sideshow. <coughs> Maybe I can listen to this lady one. Let us not go there. Yeah, what I wanted to ask, yeah. the fear by the losers is that you've been vindicated. Mm. Some have said they will flee this nation, uh -huh. you will become the president of this nation. But what assurance do you have that you will not be vindicated? I think those are figment of uh, imaginations of people who um, are running away from their own shadows. As I have said, uh, we do not have space and time. Uh, to go backwards. We want to move the country forwards. We have huge responsibilities. We have five million young people out of school, out of college. They don't have jobs. We have four and a half million people who cannot put food on the table. We have a serious uh, famine situation in Kenya. We have issues of health. We have, I mean, we have we, we have our hands full. We have no time whatsoever to go uh, asking people, uh, what did you say? Uh, how did you, we don't have time for that. I mean, those are, those are things that uh, are behind us. I think we have, uh, yeah. let me say this. <laughs> Let me say this. Uh, we are not uh, ending this evening a conversation. I, 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 I intend uh, to engage uh, you as uh, media outlets going forward because I believe in the freedom of the media and I believe the media has a role to play. And uh, maybe just to answer her in a way, uh, uh, let me tell you, when, when I criticize the media, it's because I believe in the media, and I want the media to do the right thing. I was told, uh, let me repeat this story, I've said it so many times, when I came to Parliament in uh, first time in 1998, I found a senior member of Parliament called Paul Muiten, and he told me, young man, I was then 30 years, he told me the best way to support a government is to criticize it when it goes wrong. I remember saying the same things to uh, our former Chief Justice, um, Mr. Uh, the Honorable Maraga, that when we criticized the media when they nullified our election, it was not because we don't believe in the media, not, not the media, the, the judiciary. It's because we believe in the judiciary. So when we criticize the media, it's not because we, we have issues with the media. We do not want the media to be biased. And in fact, just to respond to what you said, when I raised that issue about the media being biased, the media council itself came with the statistics and they actually confirmed what I had said. The media council said the media gave 67% of coverage to my competitor and 30% to me. That's biased. That's all, what I, that's all I was saying. You know, so, and uh, I think there has been some measure of improvement. I want to encourage you to keep. Continue to be even. Yeah. You know, we, we, want to, we want you to uh, criticize us when we go wrong, criticize our competitors when they go wrong, balance your coverage. And uh, let's, let's have a, a, a free and fair uh, media. My message to the great people of Kenya this evening is that um, uh, I am immensely honored to be the fifth president of the Republic of Kenya. It is 
something I do not take lightly. I know that there are heavy responsibilities that comes with being elected into this office. My promise to them, and they know me, I work hard, very hard. I will work very hard not to let them down. The trust they have bestowed on me and my team, um, we will go out of our way. We will spare no effort. We will work around the clock to make sure that we deliver on our commitments and we move our country to the next level. And I want to tell each and every one of them, we will serve them equally, irrespective of who voted for us or who did not vote for us. This is going to be their government, it's going to be the government of Kenya, and it's going to serve all Kenyans equally. Thank you, Thank you very much, good people. Thank you. Asante ni sana. Thank you.